Um, my team decided it was time for us to get into real estate. So I said, okay, first thing I was going to do was look for a real estate sales franchise to buy. So I went on Google, I typed up real estate sales franchise, and the first one I came up with was Remax. Because Remax apparently was the world's number one real estate sales franchise. So I said, cool, I'm going to email them. Let's see if I can buy this franchise. Right? Mind you, I don't have that money in my bank account to buy a franchise. You have to learn to raise capital. Which brings us to another point. You have to learn to raise capital. And to do that, you have to be financially educated. You have to learn to sell. People would not trust you with their money if you don't learn those skills. Right? So, I raised capital. Um, luckily for me, uh, I, I, sorry, I mailed them first. And about two days later, Remax emailed me back. Right? I said that I was interested in the franchise, looking at a six month, a three to six month time horizon. Right? You have to tell them the time horizon. And to email me the franchise disclosure document. They call it the FDD. Right? Franchise all right, no, no. Franchise disclosure document. Right? That basically gives you all the information about the franchise. So um, I called that and I was able to put the business plan together to get time. But Luckily for me, a businesswoman in Shogunas, a rich woman, um, had contacted Remax about a month or a couple of months before me. Oh, and she was buying two offices of Remax. So that got the attention of the owner of the whole region. He came to Trinidad. So this man, Richard, I didn't know he was here. I got a call from, from, from the guys in Denver. Hey, would you like to meet the one of the region? I'm like, he in Trinidad? I said, like, yes, he's here. So I got to meet him at Marriott. And um, you know, I was the only entrepreneur type there. They had a lot of employee types there, and it was pretty obvious they were employee types. Right? They didn't know how to sell and that kind of thing, they didn't know how to network. So I completely stood out. And it was I so I met this guy, Ricardo, what's the name? The guy's name. He's now my mentor. Right? We really hit it off. But when we were leaving, I gave him my business card. My business card is the cash account business card. And this man started freaking out when he saw that car. And he started scrambling with his laptop, trying to show me his cash flow card in Denver, Colorado. I said, interesting. And he told me of the story of trying to get cash for trading into Remax all these years. I said, interesting. He said, I'll be a perfect franchisee. So, got into Remax, you know. Um, right now, what's happening is, I'm. Three years into Remax, Remax is about to do uh, a story on us, a major story, right? We're in the process of that right now. Actually, I have to email them either tonight or tomorrow morning, more information, right? Um, so when that story comes out, that'll be a big deal, because that's gonna go worldwide. Remax has like, kind of satellite TV station kind of thing, so they are going to expose us out there, and they really want to bring the brands together, Rich Dad brand and the Remax brand. Because they use a lot of our training, not cash flow training, but bridge that principles in the training. Like they, what we call the cash flow corner. So I'll show you that. Right? So um, that's in the process right now. I'm right now in the midst of a little social experiment. Um, we're actually going to try to improve it in 10 years. I'll be very serious about it. But this country is actually very small, so it's quite easy. We might do it before 10 years. But once we start training people, that's it. We can take a little bit kid in high school and teach them high finance and industry and even sales. Because we now have a sales training company that uses the same techniques, fun and interactive. Right? We just came today, John and I just came from Trinidad Media Company. We're training them right now in sales. And they're going nuts with our training because sales is a scary subject. Sales makes people nervous, they get butterflies in their belly. But when you make people laugh, and then you kind of halfway entertain them. While teaching them, you can teach them anything. Right? So they're having a ball. Today they learned how to do cold calling. Yesterday they learned how to do networking. You know, we put up video footage up on Facebook and most of Instagram. I realized recently we didn't put enough videos on Facebook. So now I'm starting to fill that gap and put more videos on the sales training on Facebook for people to see this thing in action. Because over the years of running cash, we've 15 years now, we all have said that the missing element to make this a potential solution of poverty is sales training. We always said that. 
And we always, but we always depended on other people to do that sales trip. I never thought I was going to become a sales trip. But when we, when John and I put it together, I mean, it was magical. We filled all my gaps, you know. You know what? When you, this is why business and investment is a team sport. Never, ever, ever, ever start a business by yourself. Never, ever. It's a big mistake. If you look at the back of all these books, they have business and investing are team sports. Even real estate, you have to do it with a team. So it, 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 it changes your whole perception of what investing really is. Now you have to learn to trust people, right? And if you don't know, if you don't have to trust people, you don't trust people, you're not gonna make it big. It, it limits your ability to grow. Right? You might still get wealthy, we won't generate as much wealth as somebody like me who was with teams. Right? Not all projects will be successful. My mom passed away last year, January. Right? And our most important project was actually math science. Because she was really behind that. Math science slowed down tremendously. So I have one or two investors that want to get out and pay them back and bring new investors in and new family companies. But at least because the other companies I have are doing well, I'm able to bring back math science and grow a new team and that kind of thing. Right, so it's not a bit of bruises, it requires a lot of hard work. But human beings are very adaptive. We can adapt to anything. Right? I've been working seven days a week for years now and I don't even feel, I don't get stress symptoms. I don't get, I hardly get sick. I love what I do. You can probably guess that by now, right? I love what I do with a passion. I can't, I wake up excited every morning to do what I do. Because I know the impact is happening on the world. A lot of countries are watching us right now and saying, oh my god, that little island, they figured it out. Let's see what happens next. Right now, Robert is actually share my post on Facebook. Anybody saw that? Yeah. On a yeah. regular basis, anytime we pop a video, he's sharing it if he sees it. You don't see all of them. He shares most of them. Now everybody, all of the workers, he's well known worldwide. They ask him, who's this 007 guy he keeps on sharing? Who's that guy? We don't know, he don't write books? Who's he? You know, I don't know big success story. I'm just a guy running one of the best largest of his active cash clubs. Um, there are other big cash clubs out there. Like the one from Hungary is way larger than mine. But they do events. Um, we have one, another huge one in Cambodia. Yeah, both of them are my friends. We stay in regular contact. Right, because we do the same thing but they do events. I run courses. Different. And I'm the only one with a sales training course. And also the only one with a real estate program. So a lot of the graduates from our program that want to specialize in real estate investing, we we'll, of course we look at their performance at cash flow. It's kind of like a six week long interview process. It's kind of thing. Think of it like that. We get to see people, their strengths and weaknesses, and we get to gauge, okay, would they be right for the team, how we need to train them, how we need to train them in to make them better and capable of selling real estate. Right? So we're able to grow our team very fast. Because in this country, you know area, the association with real estate agents, their stuff has not passed the parliament. So we don't have to hire agents from the real estate course, which is expensive and law. So we're able to hire people to cash it up, at least until legislation passes. Now, of course, now in a position, I'm in a position where I'm start, we are starting to become dominant in the, the real estate industry. Um, so now we're trying to, we, we might look into getting more involved with area and see if we could make some changes and see if we could get some legislation passed. Because it is like the Wild West in real estate, I must admit. You have a lot of unprofessional agents out there that give the entire industry a bad name. So I can see where area comes in. I don't give them a bad name. Because Remax has Remax University. So we, our courses are recognized worldwide. Right? So it's a little different. So that's kind of what's happening right now. And, um, as we get more popular, we start to do bigger and bigger deals. You know, well, the people that come to us, which is really cool. You know, my agents are starting to make more money. That's cool. Right? But we want to use that to see if we can, you know, do it in 10 years, then probably in 10 years. That's, a, that's supposed to be impossible, right? But from what I'm seeing after 15 years of progress, it's definitely possible. Definitely think we could do it in less than 10 years. Anybody ask me that, say, yeah, 10 years, that's maximum. You know, who knows? You see, business can grow exponentially, right? 
So we have a, a sort of a poverty alleviation program that's self-sufficient. We're not dependent on grants. We're not dependent on handouts. We don't have to beg nobody for money. That's totally different. Other poverty alleviation programs are usually run by NGOs or whatever. They're not making no money. They go to poor areas where it's very dangerous, and they try to help them, but they could only do so much with limited resources. Whereas with us, we're a business. The dynamics are completely different. I'm a salesman. I'm a hustler. I love to sell. So I fill my classes and it changes people's lives. How do you think go wrong with that? So yeah, 10 years, yeah. Most likely less. We look at Guyana as well. And it, I don't know if you all know, but Guyana has a lot of oil. A lot of oil. And they have pipelines in Guyana for Right? You all know that? We are going to make and Suriname is finding a lot of oil too. This is an exciting time to be a Trinidadian. It's a big one, you know. It's very exciting, right? You're supposed to be in business right now. You're supposed to be reading these books, getting yourself ready for what is to come. To get a better idea of the kind of wealth that we're about to have in 10 years or less, look at, not just Dubai. Everybody knows Dubai. Look at Kuwait, Qatar, Oman, Bahrain, look at those countries, even Saudi Arabia, to get a gauge as to what's coming. I have a lot of mega projects on the way. How do I know that? I run a cash club. We get, we find out all these things early because it's a huge network. Thousands of people in cash club. We must find out things before we reach. I found out about Caribas long before Caribas in Trinidad, right? Adrian does Caribas, you know about Caribas? And that's in precious metal and accounting. We knew about it before it came to because Adrian do not tell me all the boy boy Roger you have to single car pass. Before you were rich, it's here now, right? Yeah. So you're in here of it or like you just know? <laughs> you know? So we get we see these things first. It's a big project and to do both and I can't talk about it. Aside the knowledge. Okay? And it's under steel. Coming. Right? So lots of excitement. It's like excitement time to be alive here. Care. Imagine that. So people have a false perception of this country because of the newspaper. When they travel to other countries, in the newspaper they put the athletes in the front pages, in Jamaica especially. The athletes in the front pages. In Trinidad, the athletes are going to the back pages. The front pages they put in crime. Crime, that's all. They could have one murder man they put in the front pages and they keep it there and put all the investigations. Oh my god, look at that. Because uh, to them, crime sells. And people think this country is failing. Oh my god, I need to get out. Wrong. People who are in newspapers, are they living here? Are they doing business here too? Are they constantly invested here? So why are you, why are you getting fooled by them? This country is I mean, this is a gold mine. Here from another perspective as well. Entrepreneurs are problem solvers. We build business to solve problems. So if there's a flood, we sell boats. boats. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a drought, you sell water. water. And if there's a plague, you sell coffins. We are problem solvers. We solve people business to solve problems. And this country has plenty problems. Plenty. Good man. And for a rich country to vote, a small population, 1.3 million, come on. And now we become bilingual. Let me tell you something. Last time I went on TV6, I brought up a book called um, um, Startup Nation. It's about Israel. Unfortunately, the host of the show was Fazir, and he's a fan of Palestinians. So he totally flipped it and took the politics instead of the true thing I was going to talk about was entrepreneurship. Because Israel produces more entrepreneurs than any other country in the world per capita. Some of the characteristics of that country culturally that we look at in the book, and I read several books on Israel because I mean, it's my field of study, right? I have to study why they produce so much friends, how they're doing it. The military has a big part to play in that. So these young kids get um, military training at a very young age. The only thing about military training is that they learn, this is called the Piano Triangle. 
Yeah. This is going to be an example. This shows the eight parts of a successful business. Right? You see the most important part of this is mission, team, and leadership. Those kids get this drilled into them from a young age, 18 to 21 for guys, 18 to 20 for girls. Ages 18 to 20. Right? So they have that. And on top of that, culturally, they have something in this world called Shutzpah. You ever heard of Shutzpah? Meaning balls. Being brave to say, speak your mind. They actually have to warn executives from Google and Microsoft and that kind of thing. We have to warn them when they go to Israel. Because the ordinary Israeli will argue with the executives by the presenting. They'll say things like, that was stupidness. You don't know what you're talking about. Why not my boss? You shouldn't be my boss. I should be your boss. They will give you talk like that. And the executives are blown away like, whoa, what's wrong with these people? They're ignorant? No, they're not ignorant. That's a culture. Shuts up, they call it. We have that here. We are very politically engaged. You know what we back up each only and come all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew that was a good thing? <laughs> we're so politically engaged, but we're not violent about it. We know, deep down inside, we know racism don't exist. We know that. If only travel to another country, you will really experience racism. Yeah. In the States, you get down with some parts. You don't have that here, that's BS. Election time, they, they, they ramp up that just to win election, and then on election day, when you vote in, it's like, wait now. You know, Where all the hate going? You know, you know, we don't hate. You know, we don't hate each other. You know, Duh. That's just politics. But we're politically engaged. We like to quarrel and argue and debate. That's a positive thing in business. A very important thing. Because you question those in authority. You don't just follow the rules just because they tell you to do something and do it. Right? Who would have thought that was a good thing? 